Syracuse. 157 passing yards, 119 rushing yards, and a touchdown in Saturday's win over Wake Forest. Averaging 294 total yards per game this season. That is second in the ACC. Syracuse 7-2 and on the year. They're number 13 now. In the AP and Coaches Poll, Louisville is at Syracuse Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern. We are joined by Syracuse quarterback Eric Dungy. Eric, it's really nice to have you on. Hey. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me on. Great to have you on. All right, so a team fell behind 10 nothing early on Saturday. And for a program, Eric, that had not won a conference game on the road in quite some time and had not won in November in quite some time, you know, I could argue that it would be easy to panic. But head coach Dino, Bab- Dino Babers said the reaction was, quote, just to chill, Pulp Fiction, chill, honey bunny, just chill. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the best. Is that what it was like on the sideline? And then how do you explain that attitude and that approach? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Wake Forest has given us some different looks that we expected. Um, they really went all out to stop the pass. So, um, Coach realized that. You know, him and I talked, and, you know, obviously we were able to run the ball really well against them. I think um, Dante, Jarvion, and Mo Neal also scored rushing touchdowns. So it was a big day on the ground for us, which is a big thing because in the in years past, you know, usually we were just reliant on our passing offense. But now that we got a little balance, it's, it's nice. So defense is trying to stop the pass that, you know, we can rely on that run. Glad you brought that up because the week before, you threw for more than 400 yards in the win over NC State. Then on Saturday, you and the offense ran 60 times for 264 yards and five touchdowns. So you touched on it, but what's that say about the versatility of the offense? Um, I think it's huge. Like I said, I mean, in years past, that that was kind of our issue was, the you know, it's finding that balance in, the, in our offense. But, you know, now that we got some versatile backs, and I think it really just, you know, goes to our O-line. I think, you know, we got a lot of experience up there, and I'm, I'm so proud of the way that they've, they've played this season, and they, uh, they really meshed together well, and I think that's, you know, um, one of the main factors of success for our team. Syracuse quarterback Eric Dunchy joining us. Now, Saturday's win was the program's first win as a top 25 team since 2001 when Dwight Freeney was there. It's pretty amazing. How much pride do you take in the fact that you and your classmates have played such a huge role in turning around the program? Um, the senior class, you know, we've been through a lot together. We've had, you know, some rough seasons in the past. Um, you know, injuries kind of got the best of us in the years prior, but um, it, it means a lot. Um, you know, we still got three games left in the regular season, which is which is big for us. And we got Louisville coming up, which is, you know, it's not going to be an easy game. I mean, they haven't had the best record, but, I mean, they still got all the athletes in the world. Um, so it's not going to be an easy task. But, you know, I'm just proud of the way, you know, this class has stick together um, through everything. And, you know, we got a lot, a lot of young guys who – have been coming up and they're getting that success. So I think the tradition around here is starting to change. Yeah, you know, I got to ask how. I mean, it's changing and it's changing quickly. The program mm-hmm. is now number 13 in the AP poll, which is the school's highest ranking since '98. When you first arrived there, things were not going so well. So how do you explain that dramatic a turnaround and how quickly it's happening? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, we have went through a coaching change, and when Coach Babers came in, you know, I really had no idea um, who he was and. He kind of took me under his wing, and um, I mean, he just brings out the best in me, and he, you know, he knows I'm a competitor, and he, you know, brings that competitive spirit out in me, which is a, which is a huge thing. You know, I just love to compete, um, and you know, he just brings out the best in guys. I'd say, um, so we got a lot of respect for him, and he's got respect for us, and I think, you know, people are finally starting to buy in. Um, in the years past, you know, people were okay with just trying to make a bowl game, but this year, you know, that wasn't our, that wasn't our goal. You know, the bowl game was expected, and you know, we're trying to do better things, bigger and better things. We're talking to Eric Dunchy, Syracuse quarterback. You know, in terms of Dino Babers, his postgame talks are legendary. Legendary. What's that atmosphere in the locker room like when he gets rolling after a big win? Yeah, I mean, it's funny. Um, you know, Coach Babers always has got some some funny to say. Um, you know, he's an older guy, so some of the younger guys don't really know what he's saying most of the time. <laughs> Um, but I, I think it's funny. Um, and he's just got a lot of energy, a lot of excitement, um, and it just carries over throughout the team. That's pretty funny. He's an older guy, so some of the younger guys don't really get it. They just kind of roll with it. <laughs> hey, listen, you're not going to make it about you, but I'm going to make it about you for one minute because as much as that win over Wake Forest was focused on the ground, you still move past Donovan McNabb and Marvin Graves on the school's career passing list. These are a couple of Syracuse legends. What's it mean to hear your name mentioned alongside theirs? I mean, it's an incredible honor. Um, you know, I grew up watching Donovan McNabb uh, play for the Eagles. He was one of my idols, and then I would never thought that, you know, my name would be mentioned in the same sense with him. So, I mean, it's an incredible honor. And, you know, obviously we throw the ball a lot more than he did. Um, he's a tremendous player, and he, he always will be. I mean, I still idolize him. Um, but, I mean, all I can really say about that is what an honor it is. You know, you're from Oregon, and when you're not training in the offseason, you get uh, get out on the water, carve it up on the waterboard, or wakeboard, I should say. How did you yeah. first get into wakeboarding? 
Um, you know, I actually just kind of picked it up um, about two or three years ago. You know, when I was younger, my parents never really let me do, um, you know, the, the water uh, wakeboarding, you know, skiing on the mountain or anything like that. They didn't want me to get hurt. And I was always playing, you know, three or four sports year-round. Um, so, you know, one uh, summer I kind of just picked it up. And at first I was pretty bad at it, but then I just tried to get better and better at it. And, you know, it's it's a lot of fun. It's pretty relaxing for me. And, I um, mean, I always just love, you know, adrenaline stuff. And that's one of the things I like to do. Yeah, it's relaxing for you, but not for moms. Your mother yeah. has said the quote, these are the things that made me old before my time. All right, so there's a place called the Pie Factory. What is the Pie Factory? How do you get there? And what's that all about? Um, I mean, it's just a, an abandoned, it's an abandoned pie factory on the river where I'm from. Um, I mean, I don't know how long it's been abandoned for, but it's run down, but it's about, you know, 70, 75 feet high. And you kind of got to scale up a sketchy tree and, you know, make a little leap like 40 feet high to get up there. And once you're up there, the only way down is to jump um, down in the water. But, you know, it's just kind of one of those things when you're younger that, you know, you just love the adrenaline. Um, so, you know, my friends and I would go there, you know, jump it three or four times a day. Um, so it's just, you know, one of those things that we did in the summer. Well, so no wonder you're freaking your mom out. Your sister Emily says <laughs> that you were, quote, kind of the runt of the family, but he was just so competitive, end quote. Does that sound about right to you? And what was it like for you growing up with really competitive siblings? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, I was the youngest, uh, my brother and sister. I mean, my brother and I used to, you know, go at it all the time. He used to, you know, beat me down, but I was never giving up. And I think that's, you know, where I kind of got it from. Um, and my dad never really let me give up. And um, we'd be, you know, we had a basketball court in the backyard. And, you know, no matter what, I, I always had to end on a win. So I'd be out there for two or three hours sometimes when I was younger, you know, barely able to dribble the ball, but I had to beat my brother and sister. Um, so that's kind of where it just came from. But, you know, I'm, I'm very blessed to have grown up with such a great family. You know, my sister's one of my biggest supporters, you know. I uh, love her so much, and as well as my brother. Um, so, uh, you know, I wouldn't be here um, without them. No, I got to think that you, you would not be, and, and certainly they've all made sacrifices for you to be where you are right now. And where you are, Babers was talking about the senior class and what it's meant to that program and how it's turned everything around and that you're going to be remembered for years to come. So when people think of you and your fellow seniors, what do you want them to remember you know, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I'm not necessarily sure. That's, you know, just one of those things that I've really just put my nose down every day and just try to bring success back to this program. Um, you know, the tradition here is so rich. You look at, you know, 44, Jim Brown, Ernie Davis, Floyd Little, these guys, and, you know, what Syracuse football was back then. And, um, you know, when I was getting recruited by Syracuse, I honestly didn't even know they had a, a football team, um, which, was a, which was a big thing. And, I mean, um, now I'm just trying to, you know, put Syracuse back on the map. And I think, you know, the seniors have – have started to do that, and I think the younger guys are going to keep that going. And um, it's just been really an honor to, you know, and a blessing to come out here. And I think everything happens for a reason, and I'm just glad, you know, Syracuse gave me a chance. That's an amazing thing you just said, that you didn't even know they had a football program. Well, you do now. Yeah. In fact, you're a big part of that turnaround. They're number 13 in the AP in the coaches poll, and you've got Louisville at Syracuse Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern. Their quarterback, Eric Dungy, my guest. Eric, great to have you on. Nice job. Looking forward to seeing it this weekend. Thanks for doing that. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on again. Great to have you. Thanks so much, Eric. Well done. Really well done. Syracuse, top 13 in the AP and the coaches poll. Dino Babers, obviously, is a jungle favorite, too. Love having him on. All right, when we come back... We'll